Chapter 1 That was a terrible night for the great city of New York. The night of Tuesday, November 3rd, 1896. The city staggered under the blow like a huge ocean liner which plunges, full speed, with terrific crash into a mighty iceberg, and recoils shattered and trembling like an aspen. The people were gathered, light-hearted and confident, at the evening meal when the news burst upon them. It was like a thunderbolt of an azure sky. Altkid holds Illinois hard and fast in the Democratic line. This elects Brian President of the United States. Strange to say, the people in the upper portion of the city made no movement to rush out of their houses and collect in the public squares, although the night was clear and beautiful. They sat as if paralyzed with a nameless dread, and when they conversed, it was with bated breath and throbbing hearts. In less than half an hour, mounted policemen dashed through the streets calling out, Keep within your houses! Close your doors and barricade them! The entire east side is in a state of uproar. Mobs of vast size are organizing under the lead of anarchists and socialists, and threaten to plunder and despoil the houses of the rich who have wronged and oppressed them for so many years. Keep within doors. Extinguish all lights. Hey there, welcome back to The Truth is Somewhere, a conspiracy theory podcast where we talk about that, conspiracies, and other things in that vein. Megan, we had a stellar intro today. <laughs> Something a little different for you. Yeah, what are we talking about? Today, we are going to take uh, a moment to talk about this enduring little conspiracy that actually came up um, over a year ago, but recently mm -hmm. had a resurgence this January about um, Trump's family and the possibility of Trump being a time traveler. Oh, a time traveler. A time traveler. Oh, no. All right. Are you ready? Are you ready for it? <laughs> President Trump, time, time traveler. traveler. <laughs> Trump, like it. time traveler. Oh, yep. Trump, time traveler. I think that's the name of our episode right there. Trump time traveler. Oh yeah. Yeah, and then maybe uh, I'll get a, I'll get I'll get a good, okay, a good thumbnail. You do it. Yeah, you do that. Okay. The year mm -hmm. is eighteen ninety three. Uh huh. And Ingersoll Lockwood publishes a children's book called Baron Trump's Marvelous Underground Journey. Ooh, Baron Trump. Baron huh? Trump. The book is a sequel to a book titled The Travels and Adventures of Little Baron Trump and His Wonderful Dog Bulger. Okay. And it's about Wilhelm Heinrich Sebastian von Trump, who was born a baron and is most often referred to as Baron Trump in the book. Okay. The Marvelous Underground Journey details his boredom with his luxurious lifestyle, and he sets off to Russia with his dog Bulger <laughs> in search of alt alternate dimensions. Oh. Baron Trump's brain is so big that his head has grown to twice the normal size. Uh-huh. Uh, which he mentions often throughout his narration. There okay. are little doodles of, like, this kid with much bigger head. Yeah, it's great. Um, Baron's adventures in Russia find him the center of attention for swooning foreign women, who he brushes off with a comment about his superior intelligence. Oh, no. Yep. He even once sued his own tutors, claiming that they should pay him for all the things he taught them. And he won. No. Yeah. Okay, this isn't a real person, though, right? No, 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 no. This is a, a character in a children's book okay. that was written in 1893. Okay, okay. But they're saying it's based off of a real person. So, yes, the the, the Baron Trump was a real person, but the, the work is purely fantasy. Okay. Yes. Okay, so it was written on a, a real person, but fantasy. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, it would be like if we wrote a book about um, Obama being... Um, a superhero. Yes. Real person, purely fantasy. Okay, I got it. Okay. Yeah. So, this begins uh, a marvelous conspiracy regarding our president and his family. So, obviously, President Trump has a son named Baron, but that's spelled with two R's versus the spelling of the title Baron. Yeah. But yeah. still, Baron Trump. A little weird. I'm not surprised he named his son like yeah, that. Yeah, right. Um, so, he comes from a prominent family and lives in... Uh, so our Baron Trump, mm -hmm. our, our little Baron Trump from the, the book, uh, he comes from a prominent family and lives in Trump Castle, like Trump yeah. Tower. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. 
And while in Russia, Baron and Trump's adventures are guided by a man called Don, and referred who is referred to as the master of all masters. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would like to note for a moment, though, that this character is a, quote, learned Spaniard. And in Spanish, Don means mister. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. So it's just mister something or other. Sure, sure. Um, but it's a really good coincidence regardless. Like, it's a lot of fun. So, uh, despite sharing a name with the youngest of the Trump clan, Little Baron Trump appears to be much more like the current patriarch of the real estate tycoon turned political family. Mm-hmm. Um, so now I'm going to usher in the theory. Donald Trump is a time traveler. Yeah, of course. Yep, of course. Uh, now, strap in, folks. Strap in, Corey. Are you ready? Ah, uh, I don't have any uh, okay. seatbelt. I'm gonna, I'll do the best I can, though. I'll hold on. All right. Hold on real tight. Sit down if you want. Maybe pull your car over. Because enter Nikola Tesla. Oh, boy. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. So in his later years, Tesla worked on several large projects that defy the reason of simpler minds and have continued to confound the most brilliant among us. Absolutely. Or at least that's what we think. Uh Uh-huh. One of those projects was indeed time travel. And upon Tesla's death in 1946, the FBI swooped in and took possession of all of Tesla's notes and papers. And they were examined by a renowned physicist who worked for the government's Office of Scientific Research and Development. Mm -hmm. And this renowned physicist was none other than Donald Trump's uncle, John G. Trump. Wow. I know. Wait, Donald Trump's uncle was a... Renowned renowned physicist. I know, it doesn't make any sense at all. Like, clearly it, like, skipped that side of the family. Hey, you know what? No, no, you can't say that. Skipped a generation. You, You can't say that. He is the president of the United States of America, are you? No, I am not, but... I mean, He's whether a- you like it or not, renowned phys- physicist to president is not a downgrade. No, it's not. But he's... He- Say what you will. He is not on Say the intellectual level of a renowned physicist. He is physicist. not my favorite person either, but... I'm just saying, intellectually, that's not... It doesn't make any sense. Like, that does not compute. It, anyway, does not, it does not compute either. It doesn't compute. Anyway... His uncle could probably handle a Twitter better, even though he never heard of one. Probably. Theorists believe that Tesla actually discovered the ability to travel through time, and John G. Trump took that information and shared it with his nephew. Mm -hmm. So the adventures of Bear and Trump are at least partially based in reality and are uh, about Donald Trump himself, who traveled back in time. Uh, Oh, okay. So when Donald Trump was born, he's actually from this time, right? From the time that he's actually from, but he traveled back in time as a child? Yes. Uh, And they wrote a book about him. Mm -hmm. And then he came back. And then he came back. Ooh. Mm-hmm. With the knowledge he learned. As a better... child with a brain too big. Yes. Yeah. To better humanity. Mm-hmm. He just. Maybe it was a. Uh, maybe he went back in time and wrote himself an autobiography about how his... mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I doubt he wrote that about himself. <laughs> it would have said something about uh, how stupendous he is. It did. Oh, really? His oh, brain you're right, was you're right. so big that his head had to grow three sizes That's larger. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And okay, the I was wrong. foreign women just swooned over him in Russia. You're right. And the you're tutors right. had to pay him for how much they learned from him. Do you think, do you think he uh, wrote out the pee-pee party? <laughs> yes. Yes, yeah. I do. Yeah. 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 <sighs> <laughs> I distracted you. You did. You I distracted, distracted you too much. <laughs> uh, similarly, to throw us off the trail, uh-huh. John G. Trump wrote in published papers that the last decade of Tesla's life were, quote, primarily of a speculative, philosoph- philosophical, and somewhat promotional character, end quote. So they didn't give John G. Trump anything solidly scientific to work with, but I'm saying that if the government discovered the secrets of death rays and time travel, which is what Tesla was working on when he died, mm-hmm. they aren't likely to publish that. And they're probably more likely to have a scientific spokesperson effectively call it all cobs while up. So if we're if we're going to go sure. conspiratorial, right, let's just go there. Say that it existed, right? right, mm-hmm. And that it's more likely the government. It's a cover up. My, my only thought about a death ray is I think it would have already come out. Okay. We've already dropped atomic bombs. Sure. I really think, unless a death ray is more devastating than an atomic bomb, I doubt that, I doubt that we actually have that. Sure. But hey, who's to say I'm that saying, we don't have time travel? I'm just saying, we're going to conspiracy, we're going with the conspiracy. That's all. Right. We're yeah. going for it. We're going for it. Let's do it. Uh, 
The tum- Trump as a time traveler camp also points to the fact that so many of his Obama era tweets seem to relate to uh, <laughs> too effectively to things he's actually doing as president. Oh, yeah. Uh, which he then contradicts. Sure, of course. Uh, for instance, in November 2013, he tweeted, quote, I truly believe that our country has the worst and dumbest negotiators of virtually any country in the world, end quote. <laughs> Can I just remind everyone that we just ended the longest shutdown in U.S. history because of possibly the worst and dumbest negotiator in the world? Yeah. I just want to remind you of that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Or this one from June of 2015, quote, Our country is in a major crisis of incompetent leadership. We cannot continue to go on with these politicians who do nothing but talk. End quote. June of 2015. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Or this one from August of 2013, quote, Be prepared. There is a small chance that our horrendous leadership could unknowingly lead us to World War III. End quote. Oh, we thought that was going to happen a few times when his presidency started. Yeah, we did. Oh, this is my personal favorite. It's from June of 2014. Quote, are you allowed to impeach a president for gross incompetence? End quote. (laughs) 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 Yeah. (laughs) So he's a time traveler and he's tweeting about himself. Yep. That's what they like to think. I'm not in the, um, the, I don't want to upset our viewers. I'm keeping my mouth (laughs) shut. Uh Uh-huh. I don't care. <laughs> we didn't care about the vaccinations. We don't care about this. Mm. <laughs> okay. Okay. And if children's books about an egotistical baron and a few time-bending tweets aren't enough for you, okay, hang on to your tinfoil hats. Mm-hmm. Here we go. In 1896, Ingersoll Lockwood publishes another book. This time, it's not a children's book about Baron Trump and his dog, but a book titled 1900. Or The Last President. Oh. The book is written as though a historian is explaining how the United States collapsed. And the words I read in the beginning of the podcast were the very first page of The Last President. And I want to read just a tiny snippet from a couple pages later. I didn't want to read, like, all three pages. So I'm just going to read this tiny little thing. Quote, The Fifth Avenue Hotel will be the first to feel the fury of the mob. Would the troops be in time to save it? Am I supposed to get something out of that? Trump Tower is on Fifth Avenue. Oh, I don't know that. Oh, you don't know that? Really? Why would I know that? Why do okay. I care? I thought that, that was just common knowledge. So anyway, <laughs> no. uh-uh. Trump, Trump Tower, Trump lives on Fifth Avenue in New oh, York City. Wow. Uh, and then later in the book, the new president appoints a man by the name last name of Pence to the cabinet. No. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. He's like the Secretary of Agriculture, which is a far cry from being the Vice President. But, I mean, yeah. but you're... Pence. Yeah. Wow. Uh, So obviously this makes all sorts of people draw spooky connections. Uh, They think the book is a warning about Trump as president. And upon first reading that first page, um, you do think it's kind of parallels the people protesting in 2016 and early 2017 Mm -hmm. upon Trump's win and subsequent inauguration. Yeah. Um, Because they're like, oh, they're being led by the socialists and the anarchists, right? Like, that's totally the kind of thing Mm -hmm. that was being talked about. Um, But I happen to think that people who stick with that idea are... uh, lacking reading comprehension okay. or didn't bother to look uh and read any further and lucky for you guys i did the reading for you it's dry it's horrible you don't want to read it but i did it for you okay and i'm gonna explain something to you sure sure uh so the person who wins president known only as brian is a populist and he appeals to the quote common people um and trump did this too but that's where the parallel stops it ends uh in fact brian runs on a socialist platform mm-hmm and Trump is about as anti-socialist as it gets. Yeah, yeah. And Brian does away with the gold standard, creates social welfare programs to house the homeless and poor. Um, so if anything, in my opinion, the book parallels FDR's presidency. Because that's literally what FDR did. Okay, that makes um, sense. Not Trump's at all. And at the end, there seems to be the possibility of a civil war between the North and South again. And the Speaker of the House tells the President he must resign. He starts to make a speech and sway people to his side again. Like, he... like. He's described so many times in the book as godlike, like people just love him uh-huh. and like fall at his feet. And so everybody's mad at him because of this potential civil war. And then he starts to talk to the people and people are like, oh no, he's godlike. And then the capital explodes. It just explodes? They're with dynamite. Oh, they just fill it full of dynamite and blow it up, huh? Yep, the end. But that's all, folks. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yep, the end. 
Well, okay, okay, the end. Yeah, that's the end of the book. Well, uh, I mean, well, I mean, there. Okay, so there's a there's a, an allusion to possibly the all seeing eye at the end of the book. <gasps> Illuminati. Yeah, Illuminati confirmed. Uh, looking upon the blown up capital. Hmm. It just the eyes. And that's it? supposed to be the, about the yeah the downfall of the United States and the very last president. Oh, what? So I would argue because this does not truly parallel the presidency. Mm-hmm. I would argue. Um, the date I think was November third that I read in the beginning. 2020, the election is also on November 3rd. Uh. So if we're going to talk about, like, time travel and this author possibly also being a time traveler versus Trump being a time traveler, which is the other conspiracy, and him warning of what could happen, I would think that it would actually be about the election in 2020 and who takes over from Trump as the last president. And the only reason that I say this... Yeah. Because I happen to be uh, rather progressive myself, if you all could not tell by now. (laughs) Uh I had no idea. (laughs) That if it comes to pass that Trump does not win as an incumbent, which is very rare, that he has historically low approval approval rating. Yeah, yeah. So if it does come to pass, it will likely go to a progressive. Uh Uh-huh. So the socialists and the anarchists taking to the street to celebrate oh. would make sense. Not to riot. From though. that perspective. Not to riot. No, yeah. to celebrate, which I is mean, what they is, were doing. Oh, that's what they were doing. That's what they then were doing. Why did they the tell them the to lock their doors and turn on They were their telling lights. the rich people to lock their oh. doors. Yeah, they were like, rich people, they're coming after you because you've oppressed them for so long. Lock your doors and turn off the lights. Oh, boy. Yeah. Um, and that's why they were like, oh, um, the hotel on Fifth Avenue mm-hmm. will be the first to fall. So, like... Trump Tower will be the first to fall because all of these people might. So my opinion, even though a lot of people try to claim that it's about Trump, my opinion would be that it is about the presidency after Trump's. Okay. Not to say that I think that socialism is bad Mm -hmm. or any of that kind of stuff and that that's going to bring about the downfall. Although, I'm in my element now. Oh boy. (laughs) Although. Although. If it were to bring about the downfall, it would absolutely be because of a... um, a civil war between the North and the South, essentially. Except it wouldn't be the North and the South. It would be, like, big cities versus rural, Yeah, it, essentially. Would, it would be about the... It would be where the population the outer, lives. The outer population versus the inner population, mm-hmm. continentally. So you'd have, like, the I-5 corridor yeah. on the West Coast, right? For the most Seattle, part, Seattle, Portland, yeah. San Francisco, L.A., mm-hmm. down, down the left coast. And then you'd have, like, New York and some of those more democratic strongholds over on the East Coast. Yeah. Versus everyone else. So where the big population bases are. Yeah. Against rural America. You mean where like 70% of the population is, I think? Based like, yeah, where 70% of the population is. So that's how it would split up because it would go the common people, right? The quote common people that Trump appeals to Uh (laughs) are the people who tend to live in rural areas. You mean the uncommon people? Yes, I know. Uh They're not the majority. But it's common people isn't necessarily uh, saying majority. It's saying like... um, essentially like blue collar yeah the working class the working class blue collar Mm -hmm. who are losing their jobs because we we don't do coal anymore because there's no such thing as clean coal and that is the way of the past and so all of these little towns are dying Mm -hmm. like these coal mining towns that are based entirely upon that are dying because that's not an industry we need anymore because we're moving on to cleaner energy and so they're mad and they see because Trump says shit like clean coal. Clean coal. Which is... Not a thing. Nuts. But because he tries to appeal to them, which is stupid. Don't don't let this motherfucker billionaire appeal to you when you are downtrodden and live off of food stamps and, like, your your jobs are going away. Like, don't let that appeal to you. That is not... He's not going to help you. It's not. But anyway... Appeals to the common people. So if he loses, and the socialists and the anarchists, right, sure. rise up and they're like, yeah, take down the rich people. I mean, anarchists would win if there was... Uh, either way. Anarchists either way, are anarchists, gonna celebrate. anarchists yeah. are coming back. Um, <laughs> but, like, the, the socialists take to the street, the socialists, the progressives, 
the liberals, the everybody who else who hates Trump, mm-hmm. takes to the streets and is like, yeah, down with the rich oligarchy, fascism, blah, 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 yeah, blah, yeah. blah, yeah. And then you're going to have this whole faction of people who now feel like no one is speaking for the common people. Sure. And there's going to be this this uprising, and that would be what it is. Yeah, that this might has be been a, a, a slight political history lesson with well, Reagan's piece. You know, there's something to say about um, riots that don't start out as riots. They start out as peaceful marches or something mm-hmm. else like that. Mm-hmm. And then suddenly some someone, something, some group of people aggravate them. Suddenly someone runs suddenly, over a person with a car. Yeah, it yeah. turns into a riot. Mm-hmm. And both sides are fighting each other and... Um, that might be what it is. Maybe they sure. won. Please come through because they're like, hey, look, uh, there was, it's turned into a riot. They didn't know that it wasn't a riot in the first place. In the first place, yeah. Yeah. And it, it's it's shown because both sides of the political line have the deplorables. Mm-hmm. They have the people that don't care about anyone, the anarchists, if you will, mm-hmm. that are going to, or, or those people that think they can take care, uh, they can take advantage of a situation, right? Sure. Smash in windows, steal things, just go out there and break stuff and have fun, Mm -hmm. right? Uh, Which obviously is wrong, but if you have those on both sides... I would say that those people aren't politically minded. Those people aren't there for the political reasons. I'm not saying they're there for the political reasons. Mm -hmm. Maybe some of them are, but I'm saying that they're there. Okay, yeah. They're the spark that starts the fire Mm -hmm. that burns down the cities sure that's what i'm saying uh and maybe i'm you know i'm playing around the conspiracy as well that's what starts the riots that's what starts the theft right the anarchists the anarchists yeah yeah yeah. who are like we want the government to topple because anarchists don't believe in well there's also something to say about a lot of people who win and suddenly think they can do whatever they want sure and i'm gonna that's i'm gonna I'm going to go out on a limb and say I'm pretty sure that's on both sides of the fence. Mm-hmm. That people think, hey, now we're the big dogs. We can do what we want to sure. do. Right? They take it too far. Uh, so, both those books are written by the same guy, right? Yep, the children's book about Baron Trump and then the one about the last president. Yeah, I mean, it absolutely... Uh, I mean, maybe Trump is not the time travel. It. It's just this author who, you know, went... Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, right? He, uh-huh. he came... He came to the future, or he's from the the from the present time, and then went to the past. Either way, I I believe that for, for this to have the most ground, um, I'm trying to remember what the rule is. Um, something uh, Occam's Razor, mm-hmm. right? I may have brought it up before, but um, the simplest solution is usually the answer. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the simplest solution in this is that. He went back in time and wrote about this guy who's on the news every day, mm-hmm. every day for something ridiculous he said, something ridiculous he did, something. And yeah, are we paying a little too much attention to him? Absolutely. But that's because it pays. Mm-hmm. But you see that and then you go back in time and you write satire, right? Mm-hmm. And then you go, man, I would go back in the future again. And get some some more uh, fodder to write about, you know, something more. And he's or maybe, like, oh my god, the country's gonna end. Yeah, or maybe he got it all, you know, got it all then, and then uh, he decided, you know, once the the present time got to where it was, he's like, I'm never going back there again. No he wrote his two books. Maybe he did three books. Three books. He two wrote... Baron Trump novels and the oh, end yes, of the yes, world. Yes. Okay, so he wrote his two about Baron Trump and then the end of the world, and that was it. That was it. That's and the end of it. Maybe he spent his whole time in the future and went back in the past. Maybe he's from the present. Maybe. And went back in the past. I'm just saying, simplest solution is that the author is the one that time traveled, not well, Trump. The simplest solution is that it's all a big quinky dink, but... <laughs> well, I'm, I'm saying simplest solution within the <laughs> conspiracy. To still be a conspiracy. conspiracy. Yeah. Uh, within the, well, it's not a conspiracy at that point. Well, that's true. It's the truth. It's the truth. Oh, we found it. Well... <laughs> maybe um probably so, we didn't find anything actually so it was great because i had um several of my friends posting this on facebook a mm-hmm. uh, really good little breakdown about this and um our friend maxine actually sent it to me and was like have you seen this and i'm like i've seen this so many times today i'm already working on an episode for it that's great <laughs> that's great so in case anybody else had seen it floating around facebook and wanted more of a breakdown of it there you have it 
Yeah, and we'll um, I don't know, maybe post some of your stuff on um the 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 chat group the, the thread. yeah the thread mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. that would be uh that would be kind of fun maybe get some people to talk about that in there yeah sounds like a good idea yeah so uh yeah in case you guys didn't know we have a Facebook group yes. in which we talk to people and people talk to us and sometimes we share some memes have a couple of laughs uh and so on what else do we have Megan. Uh, so you can find that group by searching for TTAS oh, podcast. Well, there you go. Yeah, I'm just I'm a... just like you, uh, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Mm-hmm. The same thing, TTAS podcast. So you search for TTAS podcast group, you will find the group. You just search for TTAS podcast. You find our Facebook page. You find our Twitter. You find our Instagram. If you would like to uh, give us a shout out and talk to us via email. It's the truth is somewhere podcast at gmail.com. Our show notes are at the truth is somewhere.com. If you want to buy some merch, you can find that at the truth is somewhere.threadless.com. Uh, if you like what we're doing, you can hop on over to iTunes, uh, leave that positive review. It helps other people find us. Yeah. Also, word of mouth is always great. I know that our executive producer, Afe, really, like, hits that hard, that word of mouth thing. I see her all over Facebook. Yeah. Telling people. That's great. To listen to us. So thanks, Afe. Thank you, Afe. Um, and if you really, really like what we are doing, you can be an executive producer just like Afe, or you can choose a lower tier over on Patreon, and that's also TTIS Podcast. Yeah, it's all one word. If you just look for TTIS Podcast, it is literally the first thing that pops up. Oh, I bumped. It's the first thing that pops up on Google. Yep. Our uh, Twitter account is the first thing you'll see. Mm-hmm. You'll be able to find everything from there. Uh, super easy. Yep. Excellent, easy guys. Easy peasy. That's all I got for you. The truth is somewhere, you guys. Keep looking.